Hi, and thank you for joining me. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please do consider subscribing to see similar content. With that being said, let's get started. Today we will take on a fun little project, but very important for any internal infrastructure. And that is creating some sort of an OS deployment services. In this case, we will be using Windows deployment services to deploy Windows 10 to client machines that are using the same subnet. So in order to follow along, you need a domain controller. I have a domain controller already installed that is using Windows Server 2016. And I have another Windows Server machine that is joined to that domain controller and within the same subnet so they can reach each other. So the next thing we will do is to install a DHCP server on the WDS machine. Of course, if you have a dedicated DHCP server on your network, then feel free to add the configuration there instead. So to install DHCP server role, it is very simple. We're going to click on add roles and features within the, the server manager. Click next, 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 and I will be choosing DHCP server. I will also choose Windows deployment services and add features. Click next and next, next, next. Keep both options highlighted here and click next. I always like to highlight this in case a restart is needed, so it will be done automatic. But even if it's not needed in this case, you should always restart before using uh, Windows deployment services. In my experience, it can cause some issues if it did not restart. I will click install. And I will pause this and return once the installation is done. Fantastic. Now, as we can see, it says feature installation is complete and it's asking to complete DHCP, DHCP configuration. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to hit close. I'm going to click on tools just to double check what was installed. And we can see Windows Deployment Services is installed as well as the DHCP server. I'm going to do a restart and then return once the virtual machine has been restarted. And here that machine was restarted and I've switched to remote desktop connection instead to maybe give a better visibility. So the next thing we will do is that we will go to our Windows deployment services. There we go. Click on servers. And this is our main server. Now, here's the first thing we will do. We will right click on the name of the server and we will click on configure server. Here we will click next, but uh, feel free to read this. These are some criteria that should be available before, before beginning this wizard. We're going to click next. You can do standalone server, but I will go with integrated with Active Directory since we have our own Active Directory. I'm going to click next. And here you can choose the installation path that your files will be stored in. And I will leave this as the default, but feel free to add any path you prefer. I will hit next. Here is warning that this volume is the same as the Windows volume and it is not recommended. But for the sake of this video, I will just go with the C drive. Yes, and next. Here it is asking if you want to configure the DHCP option for proxy. I will just leave it as it is. Hit next. I will highlight do not respond to any client until we figure all until we configure all the configuration and then we will turn this on. Hit next. And this will just take a minute and click finish. Now here if we can see we have install images and boot images and we will be using both for the same operating system you need both install image and boot image now as i mentioned we will be using this to deploy windows 10. when it comes to windows 11 wds is not supported as a standalone delivery method you will need microsoft endpoint configuration manager to deliver windows 11 and i will show this in a later video so the next step we will do is to add our boot and install image now here i have a windows 10 cd attached to the vm 
So I will navigate to sources and here you should be able to find both the boot.wim and install.wim. Now in some cases Windows 10 only come with boot.wim and the install.wim is not to be found. I have deliberately chosen an image that is packaged this way. So if you open sources, try to find install, you will only find install.esd and not install.wim. Now in this case what we will do, I will first copy this and go to my C drive. And I will simply just paste it here. Great. Now the next step is that we will open our command prompt as an admin and extract whatever image we want from this uh, install.esd. Now to open your command prompt as an admin, just click on your start menu, type command prompt, right click, run as admin, and I will just increase the font a little bit. Let's make this, uh, I'll go with 20. There we go. Now this file I copied to my C drive. So I will write CD space backslash enter and that will take me to the root drive. Well, the first thing we will do is using the DISM command, we will get the different information about each version of the Windows. Uh, of the Windows installation, for example, Home Edition, Professional Edition, Education Edition, and so on and so forth. And each of them has a specific index that will be used in the next command. So here I have my command ready. I will paste it. And the command is dism slash get dash wim info space slash wim file semicolon install.esd which is the name of the file hit enter and here we can see all the different editions of windows we got our home home single language and so on and so forth in this instance i would like windows 10 professional and as we can see the index for this is six which takes us to the next command and i will paste my command here and here simply i'm exporting that image as install.wim file which will be used in, in the WDS. So as we remember the index for the professional edition of Windows was 6. So I will type this and basically I'm saying the destination image file will be install.wim and will be uh, saved in the same location as install.esd. And I will hit enter and it will start exporting the image. Now this will take a little while so I will pause and return once it is done. And as we can see we are at 100% the operation completed successfully. I will open the folder again, my C drive, and here we can see there is the install.wim. So we will go back to the WDS console. We will right click on install image and we will create an image group. I'm gonna name this um, workstations for example but feel free to name it whatever you want hit next and we're gonna browse to the location of the install.wim hit next and this only as you can see have the professional edition of windows 10 so i will keep it highlighted next next and once it's done i will press finish after that, we will go to the boot image, right click, add boot image, and we will browse to the Windows 10 boot.wim file, which is located in the Windows DVD sources, and here it is. I will click next. Now keep note of what you will write here, because this will be used exactly within your DHCP server. So I will just simply name this win10 and I will have the same thing in the description. It's the image name that matters here. And this is an a 64 architecture. Click next, next. And once it's done, I will click finish. Now the next thing we will do is to actually create a DHCP pool and activate it. 
So I will open my server manager, go to tools, DHCP, there we go, and tastic IP version 4. And I will create a new scope. Next, I will name this 172 168 underscore scope and i'll have the same thing in the description i will hit next depending on your current scope or your current subnet that you want to distribute you will enter the start and the end ip addresses so i will write 172 168 10 1 and 172 168 10 and let's have 254 and this is going to be 24 slash 24 hit next here we will exclude from 172 168 10 1 to let's say 172 168 10 150 so we will only distribute ips that comes after 150 and i will hit next next do you want to configure dhcp options i will say yes hit next now here it's asking if you have a router ip address and i will just type 172 168 10 101 which is the router or the gateway i'm using here i'm gonna click next so here are both my dns servers i will hit next and here it's asking me for when server which i will leave empty do i want to activate this i will highlight no hit next and finish now before activating this there are a couple of things we need to do in scope options so let's configure the two important options for this and those are 67 which is the boot file name and 66 so option 66 and 67 the 66 here you will enter the wds server domain name or ip address i will just enter the domain uh, the ip address 172.168.10.41 i'm just gonna double check this ip config and it is 41 so i will scroll down open this come here and this is correct now here is the part i said keep note of this the boot file name it has to be exactly the same and that was when 10 let's double check this i will open my wds window and here we can see the image name is win 10 so this is correct i will go back here and i will click apply and okay and that's it i will just right click here on my scope and i will click activate great now the next step is to actually activate the wds server i will go to my pixie response and as you remember we highlighted this as do not respond to any client so we will respond to all clients and go back to my vmware workstation and here i have my test client that i have on the same network I will choose to boot normally and as we can see i can see my server ip address for the wds i will hit enter and that will take me to start installing windows 10 and that's it as you can see it's a very straightforward process and it saves you a lot of hassle and it is an essential part of any internal it infrastructure even if you're just using this at home you will simply just boot from the network and install windows i hope you guys enjoyed this and if you did please do leave a like share and subscribe and i will see you in the next video